You're live. <laughs> How are you, John? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. How are you? I'm incredibly well. It's super exciting. You know, one year later, I remember the last time we had a chat on this podcast was during preseason, August 2020. Yeah, that yeah. was like uh, just shortly after we lifted the uh, English Premier League for the first yeah. time in 30 years. And I think you just uh, returned from your holiday from Greece, if I'm not wrong, and uh, you were preparing for preseason. How yeah. have you been, my friend? Yeah, I've been good, really. Uh, obviously, the season gone fast and quick, and uh, it was a really cramped season with a lot of games in a short period of time. So we're already on the holiday now, and obviously thinking already about the next season again, and try to get some training ready for the preseason. Fantastic. Don't you need a break? Because uh, I remember that last year you went to Greece for holiday, right? Before you start preseason. So I'm sure yeah. you need at least like a one or two week break to maybe completely yeah, forget about football before yeah. you go back to the grind again and uh, to practice for, for the preseason, right? So where, where to this time? Where are you going for your holidays? Uh, we are only allowed to go to Portugal because that's the only country on the green list. But uh there's a lot of games coming up in the off season, so we'll try and keep following all the games. The, this Euros 21s, uh, there's the full uh, national team Euros, there's the Copa America, so there's and and there's qualifiers for the Copa, so or the, the new World Cup, and um, so I try to follow everything really, to be honest, and see as many games as I can in the in the time when I still have the holiday as well fantastic i hope uh, you know you take a really uh, nice uh, or even though it's a little bit short take a nice break and uh, you know come back uh, with uh, more action yeah i think it's gonna be a really exciting season and many people say that uh, we are gonna be the favorites again because our all, all our defenders uh, will be back right so it's something that uh, to look forward to so you know before we we uh, you know get cracking and maybe uh, start off with the barrage of questions that I'm going to throw at you for the next half an hour or so. Uh, just want to maybe ask about the feeling in the club, uh, especially after a season where, you know, we were actually in danger of not making it to Europe at one point. Uh, and then uh, eventually we finish uh, above the European champions, Chelsea, right? At, third, at the third place. So I think club even described uh, this season that just passed as is akin to like losing a, a leg and then uh, uh, getting injured and uh, you have to actually recover and uh, you know after you you injure your leg right of course uh, you have to actually put everything back again uh, and it's a really long process of rebuilding and actually get, finding our feet again and of course so many things happen during this season so what's the feeling in the club after a season like that um yeah the feeling is uh, a little bit frustrating really that uh, we couldn't uh play with the full team and that we couldn't uh, keep up uh, with the last three years but understandable on the other side that we were playing on a so much high level that uh, on one stage you will uh, have a few setbacks and obviously we got a lot of injuries family issues a uh, lot of decisions uh, with VAR in one game they count and in the other game they don't count and I think we've been most of the time on the wrong side of it so that cost us probably at least 10 points as well so if you count them 10 points it would have been still a close uh, call uh, to be in the, in, the, in the top one or two but uh, yeah they all the things you have to deal with and, and you know hopefully we can put everything right and some decisions uh, falling a bit better for us and and that's how it is. Huh? Yeah, uh, you were talking about VAR. Definitely we'll have to dive into the topic of VAR later on because uh, yeah, it's really plagued our season, right? Remember the game where I thought this VAR is not gonna going to go our way this season was the Merseyside derby against Everton when Henderson's, uh, you know, one of his last minute goals as usual. Uh, yeah. Was uh, ruled out by VAR, right? I think that was that was the beginning where I felt this season is going to be a little bit tricky and not the same as before. It's no longer all about uh, whether you do well on a pitch. Sometimes luck really plays a big role, and of course, talking about luck, right? Uh, and also last minute goals. Uh, maybe let's maybe start with the Allison uh, headed goal first against West Brom. 
uh, which uh, I'll be on. I think that's the game where I think it cracked all the hearts of Liverpool fans around the world, not just right here in Singapore, but in Asia and around the world, right? Uh, even though this is supposed to be the, the season where we, uh, it's considered by many as the worst ever season, but that game proved that, you know, Liverpool is able to still provide a lot of dramatic moments uh, for fans around the world. So what uh, were in your mind at the time uh, during the last moments when you basically summoned uh, Alison Becker, Ali, right, uh, to the uh, gold mouth of uh, Res Brom and asked him to put a header in? Uh, what was going through your mind at the time? Um, yeah, you know, we, we, we needed to win games, really, and, uh, and stay in the race. So it was 94 minutes. Uh, they put four minutes up, was a corner, last, last second of the game, basically. So I thought we have nothing to lose. I'm looking over, see Ali still standing there. So I shout, Ali, get in the box. So obviously the rest is history. And, you know, full credit to Ali, how the way he dealt with it and how calm and cool he was and a fantastic goal and header, of course. So it's great for him as well. The, you know, we had a few bad situations in the in the family. and uh, And then... To come back with a goal like that, uh, you know, gives him a, a, a great boost and his family, but also the whole team and the, and, and everyone uh, related with Liverpool, all the supporters, the staff and anyone. Uh, we all wanted desperate to keep winning the games and trying hard and created the chances. And, and then Ali pops up with a fantastic header. I think the Ali interview after he scored that uh, monumental goal, right? Uh, in that game against West Brom, it was probably one of the most uh, pivotal moments uh, in our pursuit for Champions League football. It was also extremely emotional. Right? I remember uh, one of the pictures that we, we saw live was uh, you, you know, wrapping your arms around him, and uh, he was really emotional even uh, during the interview as well post game. Uh, so he paid tribute uh, to his dad. Right? Do you also feel the same way that his dad is watching over him? Yeah, that's what we were talking on the field about it, really, to be honest. And, you know, it, it was a magic moment. And, you know, uh, it's it, it been a really tough time for everyone, no? uh, and, and especially Ali and all his family. And, you know, they they have a great family. And uh, I, I obviously meet them all as well. So it was a really tough time. But, uh, you know, he kept uh, going and, and obviously put also the the faith in uh in god and 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 you know um then he he uh, got this great finish and yeah that then all the emotion comes a little bit out which is understandable so we all uh, were aware that uh, he was unable to travel to brazil right following his uh, father's death due to the restrictions i mean the coronavirus pandemic so even Klopp faced the same uh, issue with his mom who passed away, right? So how did the team, the family, uh, as well as the fans, I would say, because I was in many clubhouse rooms moderating watch-along games for Liverpool. And uh, there were many games where, you know, especially that run when we lost six games at home, right? Uh, the, the, the fans didn't, you know, criticize uh, uh, the team. Uh, in fact, uh, we all thought that we should give uh, free passes to our team this season because of what Ali went through and what Klopp went through as well. Like uh, this uh, inability to even attend the funerals of their mm. loved ones and all these uh, tragedies, tragedies that were piling up uh, during the season, right? So how important do you think that the uh, family spirit behind uh, the Liverpool team, the management and the players actually helped pull together the entire team and help us to bounce back and eventually ending up you're finishing third. Yeah, it, it, of, of course, there were two tragedies. Uh, the boss had to deal with the fir first losing his mom and, and obviously with the uh, no travel uh, possibilities uh, and, and in Ali's situation the same. And, and, you know, they obviously had to deal with themselves, but also us as players and staff try to help them by being positive and you know, uh, give them everything we've got to make them feel uh, as good as they can be in this sad period and try to help them to be positive. And that's all you, you can do, really. Um, in the end, they have to try to do and deal with it. And that's what they did. Obviously, results is difficult, you know, uh, to can 
can uh, affect everyone at the time a little bit but sometimes uh, it didn't go, go for us and then you have to deal with it but we, the, the mentality stayed there you know the boys and and everyone in the club try to believe and keep fighting and and fight through the the situations we face this season which has been unbelievable really injury wise and decision wise and things like that but uh, you know in the end uh, you know we have to deal with it compete and and fight on for the new season again and uh, that let's talk about that Ali go again because I think that was uh, the moment that uh, for the first time in a long time I think the last time was during the Barcelona 4-0 Anfield win right that I actually hugged my TV I think uh, Ali's go has that impact you know I went forward I jump up and down like many fans around the world right and I hugged my TV, you know, for the first time in a long while. So uh, back to when you were involved in a process when we signed Ali from Roma, yeah? Was that uh, heading ability that you noticed even back then when you were scouting, you know, uh, for, uh, you know, great keepers uh, around the world? And of course, uh, you know, uh, your attention was directed towards Brazil, right? Because Doni was basically the person who told you that uh, there's this uh, incredible keeper, incredible talent coming out of Brazil that you should really, you know, pay a lot of attention to. When was the first time you heard of Ali and uh, when, what was the first game that you saw him play actually? And was he already displaying a lot of uh, heading ability at the time? Yeah, but he heading is uh, not uh, what you practice uh, really. Uh, this this just comes natural. The only time you practice it when you come in the game, you come outside the box to, to head the ball and I think I think it's uh, you know I've, I've been watching Ali for a long time. 2013, I watched him the first time when he was playing at the International, and then I kept following him. And in the end, uh, you know, we we the club uh, needed the goalie. Uh, we decided to sign him, and you know, Ali shows every week uh, how good he is for us and for the club and for everyone supporting LFC. So that is unbelievable good. And hopefully we can uh, do that for the next uh, six, seven years, as long as he be here. And of course, you know, I have to talk about the header <laughs> because it's really incredible. You don't see goalkeepers do that, especially in the last minute and become the match winner, right? Mm. So he's natural in everything that he does, like playing and hitting. And it was a great finish. So even I think Claude mentioned about that, uh, that header is, is a beauty, right? So... Uh, you were heavily involved. Uh, Donny was heavily involved in, in uh, telling you about him. So do you think this is the golden generation of talented uh, goalkeepers coming out of Brazil and uh, going through the door in European clubs as well? Because I understand that we recently signed another young uh, goalie from Brazil, right? I think it was sometime in October that we signed a 17-year-old. So uh, you being a Dutch coach, uh, obviously, you know, probably your eyes is cast towards goalkeepers in Europe uh, more than over in Brazil, why this fascination with Brazilian keepers? Um, you just uh, look at it. Doesn't have to be uh, particularly Brazil, but they have uh, a calm character. What helps as a goalie to m and and to make good decisions on the pressure. But the Brazilian goalies uh, I work with, they always had the great mentality and work hard to improve, and they invest themselves to improve um you know and they are really good skilled but uh you know there's different countries uh i follow all the countries what produce goalkeepers and and then if i get a tip in all the countries i follow them as well that anything what comes up and and obviously yeah the brazilian goalies have been doing well and and show that they are on the right track uh in in making more goalies in the future so that's why you look at it uh, but it can be poland it can be england holland spain italy anywhere really what comes up and you follow everywhere all the tournaments to see what is around and then you make decisions and of course uh, you know we have uh, a team or should we say uh, number one number two to number five right great keepers uh, in in the club uh, at present so uh, it seems that we are building, you know, a really great uh, uh, reserve team of keepers as well. And uh, besides 
Kevin Kelleher, uh, who actually made a bit true uh, this season. Uh, we have Adriano, obviously, and uh, we have this uh, young uh, Brazilian keeper. So who do you think will challenge for uh, Alisson for uh, the number one uh, more aggressively next season? Do you think there will be someone uh, who will stand out and, uh, you know, uh, maybe uh, say sorry to Adrian, right? But of course, we're talking about the young players, the young keepers. Which one will challenge uh, Ali more next season? I think, I think it's uh, first of all, most everyone has to improve all the time and work hard and do the best they can. And and if there is issues, then the manager will decide uh, if the time is right. Um, we be talking about the goalkeeping squad, like everyone get treated the same and need to show what they can do. And if there is a decision to be made, then obviously the boss is heavily involved because he is the man to decide in the end. And Riley, so uh, of course, you know, uh, it's like talking about Ali and the keepers. Maybe let's talk more about how you get started in your career. I remember the last time uh, when you came on the podcast, right? It was an incredible career path that uh, you've gone through. I think you started uh, playing for FC Utrecht, right? And uh, you played the goalie uh, position for Tramier Rovers for 11 years. Of course, the last year you were the goalkeeping coach over there. And finally, the no, the uh, call came uh, where you were asked to join Liverpool. And at the time, Rafael Benitez was the boss, right? So it wasn't until 2011, I think, that you mentioned that uh, you were promoted to a uh, first-team goalkeeper coach. So that was a really incredible journey and uh, probably has a lot of uh, inspiration, uh, you know, uh, uh, to uh, keepers or even the uh, coaches out there to, you know, be really uh, patient with uh, their craft. And uh, when they're toiling, you know, uh, doing what they do best on the pitch as well, right? Even for other people who are not in sports, I think even for artists or musicians or even podcasters like me, to really play the long game and be patient, right? And uh, one day, you know, uh, one of your dream moves will come true. And like in your case, uh, Liverpool came knocking. So tell us, you know, uh, um, how great was uh, someone like Kenny Dalglish or even like Roy Hodgson was responsible, you know, for your promotion as the first team coach in Liverpool. Uh, did they have a huge part to play in terms of your progress uh, to the ranks? Um, yeah, you have to, uh, you know, obviously Roy brought me to the first team and then Kenny took over. So from every manager, you pick very much good things up and um, you try to help them. You, you want to give your opinion on, on things and you know, if they ask you a question, you have to answer as good as you can and, and then show obviously with your work and uh, what, what you're working on and try to uh, speak and talk about it and, sh and show with your work uh, on the goalies really, uh, try to develop them and the younger ones and that's, that's a big base really, there's so much facet uh, on, on that, you know, on the field, off the field, watching games um okay. recruitment uh, the communication with the analysts with the, the managers the assistant managers so there is a lot uh on 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 that to do really and and uh yeah that's that's how it how it works and you know you try to develop things and look at games and make new sessions and try to be update and make much much specific sessions to to help the the goalies prepare for the next game and then individual try to improve them on their skills what can be uh, better and and that's how you work and you know my job is my hobby and uh, my passion so my passion stays there 24 7 and that is not changed you know the hunger is still the same there from the first day till till now and I never had a day where I thought I don't want to go into work. So hopefully that can keep going for a long time. This is fantastic. Um, we're going to maybe uh, pivot a little bit and uh, go towards the direction of the Super League. I'm sure you have heard a lot about the Super League. So when did you first heard of the Super League? And did you think it was a bad idea too? Yeah, I, I don't want to say too much about that because everyone saw what happened everyone read the press and and there's been a lot to uh, discuss about and that is for me it's uh, gone we need to focus on the future and not what happened there you know things like that happened we need to focus on the football side 
and let all the people around it deal with all these kind of situations. Very well said. And uh, the next question is about the uh, Dutch players who left. I think uh, Genie obviously, you know, have done a great job uh, at the club. Uh, he was singularly responsible, you know, for winning many important games for Liverpool uh, as a Dutch player as well, right? So I think another Dutch player was uh, also so during, I think before this season, uh, was it? Kijana Hover, I could have uh, maybe got the player wrong. So you only have like uh, Virgil van Dijk and Pep Linders, right, to speak Dutch with now. Is that true? Yeah, that's true. You know that, but that that happens in football. No, uh, we are working for an English club, so depends who is in there. If it's France, Belgium, Spain, Africa, it doesn't matter. You know, uh, we talk with everyone, and and uh, you all speak English. And if there is a Dutch guy, then sometimes it can help. But if there's other people in the room, you speak the language what is needed, and that's English. So, no, no issue really with that. And uh, based on this same question and this direction of this uh, interview as well, have you picked up any Brazilian from uh, Ali? And if yes, uh, what's your favorite Brazilian word or phrase that you say to him regularly in practice? You can even uh, say a Brazilian swear words if you want. No, no, I, I'm fine. I'm, I'm not uh, speaking uh, Portuguese, but uh, I did uh, saw the commentary on the goal Ali scored and I thought that was uh, amazing. Um, that's oh, did right. it go? Did it go something like this? Like go, and then it goes on for like ten minutes or something yeah, like that. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. The uh, South Americans are always great at uh, uh, football commentary, right? Probably they nailed it uh, even better than the rest of the world. And uh, you really need to train for it. So that's I'm trying it. to train for that as well. Uh, yeah. So it's great, uh, you know, that uh, you mentioned about that. Uh, did you watch the Champions League last night? Uh, the final. What do you think of the? Uh, Keeper's performance. I'm sure that uh, you also look out there for, uh, yeah, for how other keepers perform, right? Yeah, for me, I, it's not uh, on to me to talk about other goalkeepers, how they do. I, I respect every goalkeeper and his club. So for me, I watch the game. I I look at things, what I think uh, is good and what could be better and how they play. And I, I never speak in the open about other other goalies and also not really too much about our own ones. You know, you have to respect uh, the persons and the clubs. I absolutely love that. Uh, I know this is not a uh, uh, your territory. And of course, uh, even our few players uh, of our own, probably is something that uh, you're not concerned with as well. But what are your thoughts about our new signing, uh, our new centre-back signing, Ibrahima Kunati? Yeah, he, he he seems to be a, a very strong man. So hopefully he can help uh, the, all the other players to improve and make competition. You know, and and hopefully he develops uh, again. And uh, yeah, the club have uh, invested a lot in that. So hopefully he can help us. A hundred percent. So maybe uh, we're gonna dive into questions that were submitted by our community in our Discord server as well as our WhatsApp community group. So I'm going to maybe uh, post some of them uh, to you uh, right now. Uh, the question that is uh, submitted by uh, Mr. Sim Kinghui from Singapore. So his question for you is uh, as follow. So um, is Kelleher a clear number two now? What goalkeeper attributes does he need to improve upon? Uh, I already spoke uh to you about that, uh, that uh, we don't want to talk about uh, clear number two or clear number one, clear number three. Everyone has to fight for the position and work hard. And everyone has individual things to improve what we discussed with the goalies. And we cannot talk that uh, about that in the open because we don't want to talk to other clubs to to say, oh, this is could be bad or that. You know, it's uh, just uh, private between the goalies and, and the coaches to, to improve them and work on each individual and their skills. Yes, I think uh, you probably also answered uh, succinctly the next question, which is what's next for Peter Luger and uh, Grabala, uh, mm. who are, who's just back from Denmark, right? Whether there are any plans or loans or will they train with the first team? So these are definitely the same answers that we give to that question as mm. well. 
Uh, another question uh, that is submitted uh, by our community uh, on WhatsApp uh, is is whether you know, um, yeah, uh, in terms of uh, the uh, the goalkeeping uh, uh, VAR uh, that has actually uh, plagued our season, right? What are your take on technology being used, you know, extensively uh, for a football that has so much emotion and so much, you know, human uh, factoring into the uh, decision making, as well as how the game is uh, is played, you know, in the spirit of, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, you don't have to be 100% accurate, right? Or how you actually draw lines, uh, like uh, using even technology like AI, for example, or computer vision, right? And uh, those are all very disputable, even though the computer might be, you know, really correct, but the human eye sometimes has different interpretation as well. How has VAR really affected, you know, our season and uh, in terms of the points that were lost that you mentioned earlier, about 10 points, right? Do you think that next season VAR will improve? Um, that, yeah, you, that is with the FA uh, and the referees uh, to discuss and, and look at. We can't say nothing about it. Hopefully, uh, next year we're on the better side of it. It's difficult to say. You know, the, the main thing is they have to agree on on uh, the right rules and, and set the right um, standards um, and they're working on it so hopefully it improves we cannot affect that really so uh, we can only try to play well win games and and uh, you know deal with the situation you know and and that's really it for, from our point of view mr Chak from whatsapp group uh, has this question for you uh, have you been keeping an eye on Loris Carriers? Has he got uh, no more future at the club? Uh, again, it depends, uh, you know, what happens over the summer. Hopefully, uh, Loris can find himself a club to play because he wants to play as well. Um, he's our goalkeeper now and, and uh, we have to wait and see if there is a solution. We can't say nothing on that really till anything happens. Have you been in touch with uh, Simon uh, Mignolet? Uh, I, I recently saw, even because I follow him on Twitter, right? He won the league uh, title with, uh, FC, with uh, FC Bruce, right? Uh, so uh, did you, are you still in touch with him and uh, did you congratulate him for winning a title in the Belgium League? Yeah, I, I sent him a message. Uh, that's uh, normal. So um, he's a good guy and he's a good goalie. So uh, I, I try to always... Uh, send everyone here and there a message if I, if they do something good and stuff. So, yeah, you, you do this kind of things. So, so I, uh, I speak now and then. Fantastic. You know, time really flies uh, whenever you're on the show. I remember the last show, right? Uh, we were having some technical difficulties and you have to go in and out of the studio for many times. But this time, it seems to be perfect. So, well done. And uh, before we let you go, I want to do a... Uh, rapid fire question segment with you because it's something that I forgot to do the last time. And uh, here are the rules, okay? You must give really short and pithy response, maximum one or two sentences. Uh, are you ready? No. <laughs> <laughs> Even when you say no, we still have to go. What are your proudest life moments? Um, winning trophies with LFC. What do you want doing less of next season? Um... I don't know. <laughs> what do you want doing more of next season? Any any trophy we can win. Fantastic. Any advice for goalkeeper goalkeeping coaches out there? No, oh, advice is to invest in yourself and and try to do as much uh, courses and and watch other people to improve and and watch other goalie training to to use it and improve yourself all the time. Any future ambitions or side projects in the works? Um, no, no, really. I, I'm, I'm, I'm in a happy job, so I want to keep going. And, and then in the future, if anything happens, you can look at it. I want to enjoy every day and work hard every day for the club I want to be at. Any last words or last message for our listeners uh, in Asia who is uh, replaying this podcast on your AirPods or on your smart speakers? Um, just uh, keep supporting the Reds and uh, hopefully we can make everyone celebrate sometime again next year. 
of the Reds. And of course, uh, I should give a shout out to Thomas Guadamang as well. He was on my Facebook earlier asking me to relay a message to you. He just wanted to say hi to you and send his regards to you. Thomas Guadamang from Denmark, obviously yeah. the handball coach uh, who used to, uh, you know, freelance for Liverpool. So yeah, here's a shout out to Thomas. So yeah. thank you very much. Uh, uh, it's always great to have you back. And I would love to check back uh, with you next year uh, to see how you're doing and maybe uh, give us uh, your you know, uh, thoughts about the season that has gone and maybe your thoughts about the, the future seasons as well. So I hope to see you again uh, next year, my friend. No problem. Thank you. See you later. I really appreciate you. Take care. Yeah, take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.